Hello. In the previous episode, I touched upon innovating the India way from the market and customer value perspective and what needs to be done. In this episode, I will discuss it from the organization's perspective and how the organization can be successful in bringing that innovation to market. The foods and restaurant category perhaps provide us some great examples over here to look at the price and the delivery in terms of what needs is it being matched for the consumer. And very often it requires tweaking not just the product offering, but also the entire business model associated with it. Now, Domino's succeeded in India not because they could do that same 20 rupee burger. They continued to provide a pizza, but the important thing which they noted down was, this is something which has to be delivered at the home. And therefore that 30 minute delivery system became a benchmark for Domino's to be replicated across other markets, opening up a completely different new proposition to pizzas, something which has also become adopted in a much more widespread manner across food delivery and now quick service businesses in India. Looking at the price and the delivery of overall value and refining the overall delivery channel as well as the business model becomes critical notions for companies to focus on in order to succeed with their innovation agenda. In today's world, with the evolution of technology, innovating in India has perhaps become far more exciting, challenging, as well as opened up significantly more opportunities. Let me explain what I mean by that. The standard notion used to be that technology adoption, the way it's worked in developed and mature markets, tends to be replicated in emerging markets with a lag. Unfortunately, that notion is mistaken. Technology is perhaps the greatest leveler and what it allows markets like ours to do is rather than follow the established paradigm, it allows us to create our own new paradigms. And it results in us oftentimes leapfrogging technology. Let me explain this through a few examples. You know, 30 or 40 years ago, when a telephone meant a landline wired connection, despite decades, India had low double digit telephone penetration in the households. The notion would have been that this penetration has to move up to the higher levels in order for overall development. That never happened. Instead, what we saw was the Indian market adopting mobile phones in an accelerated manner with the resultant outcome that we are perhaps one of the most penetrated mobile phone markets in the world today. The same story has repeated itself across multiple different categories. We were a very low PC penetration market. The general paradigm was every household tends to get a desktop computer. The second or third computing device in the household tends to be a personal laptop. In India's case, that didn't happen. Very soon, we started noticing that the first computing device in the household was becoming a laptop. And in fact, today we notice that the first computing device inside an household is a smartphone. In fact, the same thing has been observed in the world of automobiles. Many Indians have a SUV or more specifically a MUV, which is a, which is a category which got created over here 
as the first car and we have not followed the norm of starting with a, a sedan before moving on to the SUV as the second or third car in the household. And perhaps the most illustrative space where we have observed this is in the world of banking and payments. Most Indians don't have a card. But instead, the, the penetration of digital and mobile payments in India is perhaps much, much higher than what you will see in many developed markets. So in this paradigm, with the continuous and accelerated evolution of technology, what we see is an opportunity to create innovation using cutting edge technological infrastructure rather than being uh, constrained by the lack of physical infrastructure. There's another breed of companies which have succeeded, not because they have built and established their delivery channels over decades, but the ones who actually started by figuring out effective collaborations with existing players. Suzuki, Maruti Suzuki, Honda, Hero Honda are a few examples, as are many who collaborated with the Tatas and the Godrejas of the world. Indo Ramen, the world's leading instant noodle manufacturer, and in fact, the inventor of that category, when it first entered India, decided to focus itself in terms of developing the product for the Indian taste, whereas it partnered with Hindustan Lever to ensure that it got the distribution required in order to take the product to market. Amazon more recently is another example of a company which came in suddenly less than 10 years ago and established itself within a very short period of time as an able competitor to Flipkart. Flipkart, who had almost a decade of advantage in market entry. And the reason Amazon could do that was they didn't wait to set up their distribution arm. They came, they looked around, they figured out that the, perhaps the best distribution engine in the country, which had the widest last mile delivery was India Post and they signed up a partnership with them. In this background, it's important for a company wanting to introduce its offerings over here to identify a structured nature of where to focus at what stage and instead use collaborations to make up for the remaining parts of the entire delivery mechanism. What it also helps do is look at 360 degree innovation across all functions and arms of the business model, but provide the impetus to launch without having built each of these overnight. In case one tries to do that, it calls for a much longer investment of time and resources, perhaps a luxury which few can afford in today's fast changing market. So to conclude, let me summarize with a few key lessons. First, innovation is not just about the product or the promotion or the price. Innovation in India requires a 360 degree approach, which looks at what is being offered, the use case involved, the value proposition delivered, as well as the delivery mechanism itself. Second, look at technology, not as a cost to be minimized, but as an enabler which can create possibilities to leapfrog ahead despite physical or infrastructure challenges. Thirdly, there is a need for having capabilities to deliver this integrated solution. Rather than trying to focus on creating all those capabilities in-house, it's perhaps more effective to collaborate and partner in order to ensure time to market as well as a more effective innovation. Fourth, and this is more of a reiteration, there is a need to look at the entire business model surrounding the innovation. In other words, 
as long as a company is able to create and deliver that value to end users, it will be able to appropriate value for itself. And finally, perhaps the most simple one, there is no shortcut to hard work. Innovating in India is a challenge. It's a challenge not to be running away from. It's a challenge which we'll call focused, extended grunt work. Be prepared for it because there is treasure at the end of the journey.